Yes. We're all in inside this tent. It's, um, it's comfortable. What we learn about Africa in the West is not true. Like most of it is, is propaganda. Um, we're out in the village and nobody's hungry out here. Nobody's starving. Everybody eats. I mean, there's food everywhere. This is my actual dream. This is the vision I had before I came here. Stay tuned as we get a tour around their two acre property and find out why they moved to Ghana. I'm Vanessa Canby and I am here in the forest as you can see and I'm meeting this amazing family who have moved from the UK to Ghana. We're the Kings, I'm Daniel. I'm Jarrell. And I'm Tian. What made you decide to move to Ghana? To be real, Jarrell had a dream and she woke up from the dream in hysterics, actually crying and said we've got to move to Ghana. And I was like, what? Like, we've always had a dream of leaving the UK, but she just woke up just crying and said, we've got to move to Ghana. And I was like, okay, like, just like that. And then within three months, mm. we were here. It wasn't as straightforward as that, but within three months, you know, we sent off for our visas. Um, we, we checked out Ghana. So we watched a lot of your videos, a lot of the videos on YouTube. And we thought, okay, we can do this, let's, let's do it. We always wanted to have, uh, live in nature and have a retreat. So in the UK, we were looking at like Bournemouth and all these, um, you know, up north where it's a bit countryside. And we just decided to come. And the year of return had happened the year prior mm. to us getting here. Yes, this was 2020 when we arrived. Yeah, so it seemed like a place that we'd be welcome. Um, so. That's, that's the reason we came, to really get away from the consumerism, to get out of, of Babylon as such, to, to just escape everything that we didn't like about the UK. Our children not being safe. Um. For me, my reasons were really kind of based around my children's well-being and, you know, I wanted to be able to provide them with every possible resource that they can thrive and um, I didn't have that in the UK. I didn't, I possibly could have done it but I felt like there were a lot, there's a lot of opposition, there were a lot of hurdles um, and you know, and I mean like in terms of systematic hurdles that I just felt like Oh, it's just going to be very difficult for me to give my children the kind of upbringing that I want to give them and um, provide myself and them with the freedom mm. um, that I know that we deserve. Um, being in nature, um, being on the equator, so the sun as well, the vitamin D, which is something that most people are deficient in, especially if you're um, in the northern hemisphere. And yeah, just their well-being. Mm -hmm. you know? we, we did actually try Jamaica. Prior to that, we mm. tried to go to Jamaica, which is our heritage, um, and it just didn't work out for us. We actually got Aki poisoning. I don't know if you know Aki. Yeah, I know what Aki is, but I didn't know you could get poison from oh, it. Oh, yeah, if you yeah. pick it before it opens, it's, mm. it's, to it's very, very toxic. Cool. And yeah. we survived Aki poisoning, which is unheard of. Oh. Just um, two of us. Yeah, just, just me and Jarrell. And yeah, that kind of like threw us off of Jamaica a bit. So what we did is we, well, it wasn't, like I said, she had the dream. So it wasn't a conscious thought, but then we realized that we're just retracing our steps because those that are in Jamaica, they came from West Africa. Mm -hmm. So to be in Ghana and to get the call um, to be in Ghana, it just made sense. And then coming here, it was like, oh, this is just like a bigger um, Jamaica, just mm -hmm. with, you know, it's just bigger, basically. It's just yeah, not an island. Yeah, a lot of similarities. Even the language that they speak is very similar to you know, what they, how they speak in Jamaica, so. So you've not only just moved to Ghana and moved to Accra, like what I have, which is a pretty similar life to what I was probably living in the UK. Like the supermarkets are pretty much the same. You've come and you're living in, not the middle of nowhere, but you know what I mean? <laughs> Everywhere you look is green, which mm -hmm. is so beautiful, but it's a totally different life mm. to, I'm guessing, the life that you might have lived in, in London. Oh, we came from leafy Chingford. Um, oh, okay. So the hustle and bustle of, of Chingford, the closest greening we had was Epping Forest. Um, granted, it was across the road, but it just wasn't enough for us. Mm. Um, we needed to escape the consumerism, like I said, the, uh, 
just the toxicity of it all and coming to Ghana, um, we've been on the land here for nine months. Yeah. yeah, but we've actually been in Ghana for two years. We have been in Accra, we've stayed in Spintex, Tema, uh, Abri, Abri. Mm. We've, we've done all of that and it just wasn't for us. It just seemed like consumerism part two for yeah. us, <laughs> yeah. like, but just with the sun. Mm. Like, as well, it was like trying to um, escape the artificial world um, in replace of the natural world. Mm -hmm. because, mm. You know, that's, that's for me what's brought me so much peace, it's brought me healing. And I'm just speaking for myself, but I know I can speak for my family when I say that this experience, um, not just coming to Ghana, generally speaking, or Africa, but actually coming to and living in nature, because it was a fear, and it is a fear for most people to live very isolated like this. Um, at the time, we had no electricity, no running water. It was bush. Mm. Like just bush. We, just we didn't even clear them. The patch wasn't even cleared. cleared no. It was there was nothing here and um yeah, to do that um has been so healing and the teamwork that has been required of all of us <laughs> to live in a very confined space with our age group as well. Like the difference is we've got four, six, fifteen, um, thirty three and forty two. It's, yeah, it's been it's, it's a, challenging. Challenge. <laughs> <laughs> a challenge. You've come from London two years ago, so you were still a teenager. Yeah. How has that been? Like, what was life like as a teenager in London in comparison to life here as a teenager? But well, one thing is, it's obviously very different. Mm -hmm. um, in terms of like my social life, I don't have one. Mm -hmm. well, <laughs> I I have friends and stuff here, but because we're so far out from Accra and all my friends are in Accra, it's hard to um, meet up with them sometimes. And then in London, I used to have my friends all around me. Like, it's been a challenge to kind of settle in, but I'm starting to like it now. As far as I am concerned, she is above going above and beyond my expectations. Um, you know, as you go around, I'll show you other things, but she built this wall yesterday. This is so cool. Like, like that by is herself. Amazing. She built the wall, the she outside, plastered, she, plastered she plastered most this. Of this as well. Like she's doing things like she drives the um Abubia. Um, yeah, she's just she could do and it all, collect firewoods out of fire, mm. she cooks outside. She just literally she can do it all. If we're being real, she resisted. She didn't want to be mm. here. Um, she, didn't, yeah, <laughs> she didn't want to be here at all. And, you know, it's been a struggle trying to convince her that this is what she needs. needs. Mm. Um, and, you know, we've always told her, when you're 18, you can go and back if you want. Do you know <laughs> what I mean? But I know now she's finally finding that sweet spot. Uh, she's finally finding her groove. And, you know, I'm sure, you know, you feel a lot differently now. Don't let me put words in your mouth. <laughs> no, I, I do. You know, what we learn about Africa in the West is not true. Like most of it is, is propaganda. Um, we're out in the village and nobody's hungry out here. Nobody's starving, everybody eats. I mean, there's food everywhere. Mm -hmm. I know when you was driving in, you must have saw planting on the left, yeah, exactly. pawpaw on the right. And like co cacao trees. Right, everything. it's just, in, there's such an abundance here that, you know, more food than actually, I mean, you know, natural food than there actually is in the UK. You can hardly grow anything in the UK, you would struggle. Um, so, you know, the, the perception that they give you in the West of, of Africa is so wrong. I mean, even our family members said, you can't go to Africa, there's bandits, you'll starve, like, like you won't be accepted, um, you know, and... All the, you know, all the diseases. All the diseases, you need this shot, you need that shot, you need... And we were just like, whatever, like... It's fear mongering. It's, it's so much fear, and once you mm. overcome that fear, um, you know, you realise that and I'm not going to say it's paradise because it's not, but it's the foundation for your paradise. It's what you create. So whether you're in Accra, you can create your paradise there. Or whether you're out here in nature, you can create paradise out here in, in nature. It's just about a frame of mind, basically. Your vision. Mm -hmm. And, you know, are you focused? And also, I feel like a lot of um, us coming from the West have this instant gratification thing where we just want everything we want it right now mm -hmm. right the convenience yeah because yeah. that's the programming right we're all 
Um, so used to having things on your literally on your doorstep. You know, our houses are already made for us. Mm -hmm. Like, there's a lot of things that we don't have to do. Even um, like water, it just yeah, comes to that, your house. You just don't have to think about like gas is just piped into every house. <laughs> exactly. Like here is just. You have to actually think about how life should actually be, mm -hmm. yeah. and you appreciate it more when you, when you mm. you know you have to you know travel for your water or pump the water. When like, you have to pump your water, you will not just let the tap run. Yeah. Or do you know what I mean? You you you're more mindful it, yeah. of of what you waste. So you know even now like we ran out of gas and we we're just like, oh my god we've run out of gas. Like so you have to think about things. Be a adaptable lot. and flow and. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and then what's important is it's about what's important because mm -hmm. in in the the West you don't think about gas you don't think about water and you're so you know wrapped up in Instagram or all these mm -hmm. other things where here we got to think about do we have water and you realize that you don't need so much we came here with so many barrels of you know stuff. of <laughs> stuff comfort and it's just been a hassle because I've got nowhere to put it I'm like well, what was I thinking I bought all this stuff I mean I've got a juicer. <laughs> What? I do don't have a it. kitchen. <laughs> like, I've got a washing machine in my tent yeah, and no way to use it. It's just storage. Like it just drives me crazy. I'm like, oh it's my a table. God. A washing machine is a table. It's just, uh, <laughs> crazy things like so that. So washing by hands. I know that yeah. Jarrell has struggled washing yeah, by hand because of her nails. <laughs> and it's like, but all of these things, they make you stronger. Mm -hmm. Like they've made, I'd say Africa has given me so much healing and it's made me a man because, you know, I built that. Like, mm -hmm. do you know what I mean? With my, with my bare hands and, you know, everything you see around us is what we have created and mm -hmm. we own it. Like, yeah. I didn't own anything in the UK, like, other than myself and my children. I didn't own, I didn't have no physical, mm -hmm. you know, any houses that you may have had. You don't, like, the it land... six feet. You only own six feet. Like, mm. that's it. So if they want to scoop you up <laughs> and just, <laughs> like, they can, do you know what I mean? So just being here and having the sense of freedom, and Not a sense of freedom, I just want to say, it is freedom. No, the freedom. It is freedom. The peace. Mm. Um, it's just bliss. And the empowerment. Right. From being self-sustainable. Yeah. Or so on the journey to self-sustainability. Mm -hmm. What brought you to this exact piece of land? Um, so after looking at about three different pieces of land, so first in Abri, uh, Adukrum, right next to Safari Valley, um, and then the deal not working out and then staying in Accra for a little while and then we, I saw a, a brother online, I think you might actually know him I call him a Juma Ding but he's called uh, Joshua Oh and yeah He lives yeah, 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 so he lives like literally maybe three miles that way Oh okay So I contacted him and then he actually brought me here Oh um, And introduced me to Kwame and yeah and then they showed me this land and it was just complete bush, but I just had the feeling that this was it. So what was the first thing that you did when you came to this land? As you said, it was bush. I'll let you answer that. Um, the first thing we did was clear the patch for the tent. Okay. That's the first thing we did. I mean, after them cutting down everything so we could just get a feel for, OK, we didn't even realise that the land was on a gradient. Oh, you know, right. so once we cut down, we could see, oh, OK, there's different levels here. We chose that spot because um, the trees. Yeah. Where did you get like the canopy and the tent from? Uh, so the tent we brought with us from the UK. Oh, right, okay. So we always knew that when we got here, um, literally we went onto Google Earth and we were just like, right, we're just gonna go into the mountains, that spot, <laughs> and we're gonna pitch our tent up. We're not even gonna buy land. We're just gonna be, be out there. there free. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So we, um, oh, that didn't happen, but we did have our tent. So we came completely ready with oh, tents okay. and tools. We came everything to build. Yeah, everything yeah. to build. So yeah. the barrels that you see here, like yeah, we came with about nine of those and they're just full of tools and yeah and stuff. And then we got this this thing above it um, built locally. All oh, right, okay. Yeah, and it just protects our tent a little bit more than it's usual. weathered. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so it's without perfect, that, perfect, we wouldn't have made it through the first rainy There's season. No way. Oh, the rain would have come in. Yeah. yeah and the rainy season that we're getting now, as you can see, we're struggling. So mm. the race is on to complete this the house. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's on. So right now, do you all live inside the tent? Yeah. We all live inside this tent. It's um, it's comfortable. It is. 
Yeah. 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 No, it's yeah. comfortable. Yeah. It's just um, we're like always yeah. around oh, each other. So. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there's no, there's no privacy. Like, so. like to be blunt, we have a little corner which is like our bathroom, which has mm. a compost toilet in. Um, you know, the sawdust kind of thing. I don't know if you know about. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, so we go to the toilet, but you literally it's just a curtain between each other. <laughs> Um, and then we have our beds and we've got a TV in there, we have oh, a fan. Oh, nice. Wow. Table, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. LED lights, so it's a vibe oh. at night. Yeah, we've got LED lights. <laughs> like, inside is a lot nicer. And we've got our little outdoor <laughs> kitchen. Tian, mm -hmm. you're mostly in there. Do you want to <laughs> show them around? Most of your domain. <laughs> yep. So... As you can see, this is the kitchen. I don't really know what to say. It's the kitchen. So what, what do you, what do you cook here? with? Yeah. Um. So we cook with this. There's normally like a big gas tank there, but it's empty, so um, we've got to fill it up. Um. But cook here, and then we wash up over here, and um, that's where we store all our stuff. Most of the stuff we bring inside because if you leave it outside. The chickens are ever gonna eat it like they eat the yam raw. Oh right. Like that. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't really know that's what chickens were yeah. eating. <laughs> um or you can't leave um fruit and stuff out here, fruit flies, all the flies will just oh, start coming right, around, yeah. so it's not really nice mm -hmm. um space to be in. But yeah. Oh nice. <laughs> and you've got some hooks up yeah, here to hang up your pots, pots and pans. And, stuff, and we've got our planting hanging up. Amazing. Right thing, so yeah. It's nice and it's covered. Yeah. And there's electricity actually coming in yeah, as well. So that plug goes into the tent, so that's how we get our electric and then this one's for the speakers and stuff. Oh, okay. Yeah, and it's nice that you've also got your speakers and things. <laughs> you've not left everything yeah. behind yeah. in the UK. <laughs> Music is, is something that we're so grateful for on this land. Literally if we if we didn't have the music, it'd be so hard. So when we put the music on and we start working it's just it's so much easier um, to just get on with the work because we're just lovers of music. So it's a, it is a real vibe. Yeah, it's yeah. definitely a vibe. It feels like Jamaica as well because yes. we play mainly reggae and stuff. Mm -hmm. So yeah. The next thing we did was what did we do? Uh, we built a chicken coop, but we we built it. Yeah, it was there. Uh, we built a chicken coop just because we came here like with the mindset of like preppers. So like the world's gonna end. We need to be prepared. Um, as well as, you know, the self-sustainability. So we built one over there. It didn't work out too good. And we built one over here, which I'll show you. Um, the storm wrecked it t two or three days ago. So the roof panels have fallen off. But it's just literally a place for our chickens to sleep at night um, before we build them an actual proper structure okay. out of blocks and stuff. So, yeah, it's just this little area here. Thought it was going to keep them in there, but those holes, the fences, they squeeze through them. Oh, right, okay. So we struggle. <laughs> and their, their eggs, I must say, are amazing. Oh, that like, so if you good. haven't tried one of their eggs, you definitely need to. Their eggs are amazing. It's just a completely different taste from mm. what you might buy in the yeah, market. It's very rich. Was this your form of transport? Yes. So this is what you call... An abubuya. Abubuya. Yeah. <laughs> Go on. So this is this is our form of transport. I've taught Tian how to drive, so she drives it. Um, is it like a motorbike? It's like a motorbike with a truck, so like a oh, right, okay. truckcycle kind of thing. But this baby, she looks a bit battered at the moment, but she has, you know, she's brought in sand. She's brought in a lot of the materials that we have here, rocks gravel everything she's broken down at least a hundred times oh. she's <laughs> her engine has been welded and welded like here what, what i've realized in ghana is you know the um you don't just throw things away yeah you can't just throw things away you have to learn to repair them Really quick, much quicker than I expected. <laughs> so it's a very fast way to get around. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. And so, what's the idea behind the house? Okay, so initially we just wanted to do like a little shed for storage because we had so much storage outside the house. It was getting damaged by the uh, rainy season, and then I just 
I just kept adding to it. So this is like a little entryway. Like, I'm still British. So I just need the room before I come into my house. <laughs> yeah, because yeah, just somewhere to take off all the outside gear and stuff. So that's what this um, is. And you step down at the moment, but the floor will be raised. So oh, okay. it will be one height. Um, this area is the kitchen. So this is like the kitchen window. Um, so a U-shaped kitchen with a breakfast bar where you're kind of standing nice. um, so that we can all eat. And then if you turn around, this space here is like the living area. So, so that's like a set to you over here. Yeah, that that's for the TV. Yeah, probably. Okay. Although I didn't want a TV on the wall. Oh right. Yeah, I didn't even want a TV on show, but he's like, This is a family house. I'm yeah. like, actually it's my showroom. <laughs> 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 it's a show home. So she's very much into interior design and I'm into architecture. Oh, so right, okay. the outside is kinda like for me and the inside is, is it's for all my okay. yeah. <laughs> Um so yeah, so we've gone like double height. Um, and they were like, just make it two floors. And I was like, no, then I lose double height mm. ceiling. So um, this would up, up here, mm -hmm. you can probably see it better from this angle, is mine and Daniel's room. Oh, nice. Um, so it's like mezzanine, loft style. So it's very similar to like tiny house setup. Mm -hmm. It's yeah. just slightly bigger. Um, so there'll be some stairs coming up here that will take you up there. This is the children's room. Oh, nice. Amazing. Yeah, the ceilings are so high. High. Right? Yeah, yeah. So high. that's on purpose because otherwise I, we, I thought it might be just too hot in here. And oh, because right. the, the spaces are quite um, compact, I thought if we go higher, it will give the, the feeling will yeah, as, well. as well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And people say that this is small, but you should live in our tent. Right? <laughs> <laughs> our tent is <laughs> tiny. Um, and then, you know, Tiani is getting older, so she'll be looking for her own space real mm -hmm. soon, which will show you the potential of that oh, is okay. next door. Yeah. So really, this is the boys' bedroom. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so, so they'll have some bunk beds over here, oh, yeah, and nice. then they've got all this space to play yeah, and no, stuff. Yeah, it's a good size. Yeah, and a great window yeah, as well. Yeah, amazing natural light <laughs> coming and in. And they spend the majority of their time outside, outside. anyway. Yeah. So. so it's just for, like, sleeping. Yeah. <laughs> this is the bathroom. <laughs> Oh, nice. Okay, so yeah. Just that sounds quite big. You think is so? That, yeah. Yeah, it feel big? Like oh, that's good, because I didn't yeah. want it to be a pokey space. So like there's shower, toilet, sink, um, and oh, then a yeah, cabinet. Yeah, so yeah, very simple. And So are you going to yeah. build things out of, I see there's bamboo there actually. Are you going to build things out of bamboo, wood, or from um, inside the house? So the termites are a bit of a problem oh, here. Okay. Yeah, and I know there's some wood that we can use. Um, but we've decided to go for, there's a very, um, there's a look, it's used in Ibiza as well, sometimes Mexico, and it's basically, they're just doing the whole thing out of either bricks or blocks, and then it's plastered, and it kind of has like a seamless finish from wall to oh, furniture. Nice. Is it like your seats outside, that sort of yes. like, yeah, that's I actually what I'm love that. It's like Santorini <gasps> Me too, well. yeah, it's exactly yeah. in Greece, so that's what we're doing everywhere. The kitchen will be the same oh, cool. in here. I think it, Bali do it as well, mm -hmm. a lot, yeah. yeah no, it looks the children's really beds nice. will be made from that as well. Oh, nice. Um, literally everything. Oh, that looks great. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it looks really, really, really nice. It does, right? I love it. And it means you can make it yourself and you exactly. don't have to like, buy beds or like, anything like that. Exactly. Mm -hmm. oh, so cool. then there's another part I'll show you. Starting was when I first had a little piece of wall up, I felt so proud of myself. <laughs> so you can imagine how I feel when I see this now. Um, it's a bit hard to get in here because um, this is now our storeroom. But, uh, it's a guest, our first guest house. So basically it's just gonna be a bed, kind of living space, and then you've got this is which is the extension of the bedroom. The bedroom. So you could have a desk. Dressing here, table, wardrobe, oh, yeah. wardrobe. Dressing table and then and through here a suite bathroom. is a bathroom. Oh nice. Through here is the bathroom. Um, and yeah, and it's got beautiful views, mm. but it's the first guest house for what we want to do as a business. Obviously you're out here in nature. Some people might be thinking, what do you do to make money? Like, yeah. how do you survive out here? So we had a business, Illuminate Essentials, which is a natural skincare business in the UK. Um, we sold it at the beginning of this year. Mm -hmm. um, so we've put all of those funds into this. Um, we're not the nine to five type of people just because we want to remove ourselves from the system. 
Um, so we do a lot of our um, earnings online. Um, you know, I'm, I'm very tech, I'm well, a bit of a nerd, she would say. So <laughs> that's how we kind of like earn our money. Um, but in terms of this project, where really we've got a GoFundMe that we have, that we're really trying to encourage people to, to donate to, because what we want to do here, we feel like it's for everybody. Like mm -hmm. we feel like mm -hmm. even if you're in the West or like yourself, you're in Accra, I feel like this experience mm -hmm. is something that a lot of people can benefit from. I feel from. like it's essential, especially if this is something that you, you know, you feel called to do or you just, you just want to try it and see if you can actually live in this kind of environment. Um, just having the support, because we didn't have that when we came here. Mm. So we're like, okay, right. So if we needed it, then we can provide it for someone else now that we're in a position to do that and allow people just to see what returning back to nature actually feels like, but with, you know, the amenities and the comforts that we're used to mm -hmm. coming from, you know, the West, like you don't necessarily want to sleep outside to be close to nature. Mm -hmm. you know, some, Sometimes you want a bathroom and a toilet and a bed and, you know, a roof, maybe. Kind of. Saying that, like, <laughs> one of the uh, things that you would have to do if you come oh, here, yeah, once. you would have to sleep outside for one day. One night, uh, yeah. Like, actually outside. Or actually yeah. so outside. I'll, no, not in a tent. Oh. Outside. No, actually outside. So I'll take you to our sacred circle. Okay. It's, it's not complete, Finished, but I'll take yeah. you to it um, and show you where you would sleep and the benefits of that. Um, we had to do it. We did it at Joshua's place for one night and it was... It was healing. I say he had to, but not he didn't force us to do it no. or anything, yeah. No, we, 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 I feel like we had to because we was called to, but mm. yeah. we did. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And what it did is it just helps you to conquer your fears and then you realise that, you know, there's nothing to be scared Afraid about of. here. Oh, yeah. Like, yeah. Mother oh, Nature so has you. Yeah, you you're, can sleep you're outside. protected. Snakes won't get you. No, there's nothing here Nothing's that, gonna bite that wants you, to harm that you. They don't want to harm yeah. you. So, you know, and it, that was more for me than mm. I believe you, because, you know, her being a different. I sat and watched over him. So yeah. that's what that's um, what I'd offer here is that while you sleep, I will watch over you or he will watch over you. We take shifts mm -hmm. um, so that, you know, you just feel more at ease and comfortable while you're going through what we refer to as a rites of passage, um, which is basically just the Divine Mother just taking you through the healing process and returning back to nature. But this place is actually called LIFE. Mm. So L-Y-F-E. Um, LIFE stands for love yourself for eternity mm. because there's nothing better than this. It's like, this is like where we came from. We came from the earth, do you know what I mean? And living amongst it, it just makes sense mm -hmm. to us. And, you know, even convincing Tian, um, <laughs> <laughs> you know, and our other children as well, like some of them think we're crazy and some of them want to come out here but slowly they were like, oh my God, we can see mm. the benefits. Even like as a father, they can see the benefits in their father, like how I've changed and mm. you know, how I've grown. So yeah, it, I just know what it can do for people and whatever your trauma is, I know that nature, mother nature, mm -hmm. she, she knows what that is and she knows how to fix that. All you have to do is submit, mm. like, submit and come into her and she would, um, you know, just spiritually heal you. Even like the balancing between our own energies, because I had a lot of masculine energy before, so I was like very in the do, do, do role, the strategizing, the organizing, the every, just, you know, like most people are um, coming from the West and um, our energies have balanced them. So he now has more masculine energy and I have more feminine energy. And I'm just like here, just flowing and <laughs> just like, just, it's so it's amazing because it's not it's something that I've always wanted um, and I've been trying uh, to you know meditation and yoga and just everything you know eating healthily and still still there were certain things that I just still had issues with um, like with stress and things like that but the peace and the balancing oh my gosh it's just indescribable it's one of those things that you just have to feel it to know it this contraption in front of you here is going to be a swimming pool believe it or not so this is the deep end and then this this level will be here this so is for this, children yeah oh, for nice. the children yeah. and i've never built a swimming pool but you know how do you know until you try mm -hmm. um you just watch youtube yeah. <laughs> it's organic architecture yeah, i like to call it yeah but extend 
along this hill and there'll be an open kitchen at the far end there. Oh, amazing. There'll and then the another, play area. <laughs> yeah, play area there, another guest house there. Um, where we're currently at with the tent is going to be hydroponics. So our farming will be, you know, we will farm um, from the ground and in beds. But I learned hydroponics when I was in, in the West, so, which is growing with just water. So the river that we have at the other end of the land, which I'll show you, will feed everything underneath that tent oh, so once cool. we get out mm. of there. Amazing. How do you find it being out here? Um, very fun now that I've gotten used to it. Well, I've been in nature for a long time now and I've discovered new things and learnt new things and found out new ways to play with nature and try to get used to it because I don't know if I will ever be leaving and <laughs> I am getting a lot more used to nature Amazing. and I'll nice. love to get even more used to mm -hmm. it. Yeah. yeah, you seem to be having fun, like running around, playing on things, playing on like the bamboo over there and stuff. It's really cool. It's really nice to be like living a life like this. Some people never get to experience it. Find the hole behind you. This hole is Basically, nature gives you everything. So the sand and clay is very rich here. Oh. So we initially started buying blocks and then we realized that we could make our own. So that's what you see over there. Oh, amazing. You've got like yeah. a block factory. So we just make our own blocks, basically. Um, so do you have like a, a mold or something? Yeah, so we've got two molds in, in oh, the right, uh, okay. room and it's just literally sand and a bit of cement and literally just tiny bit of water not as oh, much as you really? would do for mixing uh, concrete or mortar and then put them in the mold tip them out and let them dry in the sun and you've got blocks wow that so is so amazing any hole you see around they will be filled we just have to take sand mm -hmm. um, from them did you consider like uh, earth bricks or anything like that yeah we actually wanted to build with hemp when oh, we right, first yeah. came here um, but we're just using what we have mm -hmm. um, hemp the legalities of it here have not been cleared up behind you as you can see our old gate is oh. on the floor oh right yeah um so the we storm had this knocked it over yeah <laughs> yeah the it storm looks nice it was it. nice yeah it so was now lovely. we're blocking everything in with a wall oh right okay um it just gives us a bit more privacy mm. um a lot of people say oh, is, is it for security but we don't feel unsafe here at all mm. like we know everybody in the community our children they couldn't get out of here if they wanted to because they'd be pulled up by somebody mm -hmm. um, and they can walk around this community freely. Yeah, so. they go to the shop by themselves and stuff. Oh, that's it's more the for privacy yeah. than anything. Yeah, um, I mean, on the, on the far end, there's no boundary whatsoever. So it's open over there and then we've got, it's open over there too. So yeah, it's, security is not like one of our priorities. Mm -hmm. Yeah, oh, that's so nice. Yeah. And then we, where you actually standing was waterlogged when we came here. Oh, really? So just a bit of permaculture, um, which we studied from YouTube as well. Uh, we decided to build two natural ponds. So this is one here um, and it's full of frogs and all sorts oh, of cool. life is in there. And then there's another one over here. And what we intend to do is get catfish from the river and to start um, farming catfish oh, and tilapia oh, that's a good idea. In, in the ponds. Yeah. Moringa tree here. So they just broke this piece of tree off for us from down there. And they said plant it and water it every day. And I was like, it's not going to grow, but it's growing. Oh my God, wow, that's I know. so amazing. So it's <laughs> just I know. like a stick. Yeah, it's just a stick. And oh, it just started wow. growing. I was like, wow. Oh, that's so cool. And one thing I learned from Jamaica mm. is that whatever's on the land is for you. Mm. And me and my youngest son, Daniel, we have blood issues. And um, Jarrell is sick of cell trait as well. So we all have blood issues. And actually, we just found out that you're you anemic. anemic <laughs> as well. So we all have low iron. Mm. And if you look over here, there's, there's about three of these on the land. And these are, uh, I don't know what they call them here, but we call them turkey, turkey berries. Turkey berries, yeah. Um, so this is so rich in iron. Do you want to try it? So you can just eat it like yeah, that? Yeah, just eat it. I, I'm actually anemic as well, so... Ah, so two of these a day, 
and you'll be you'll be fine. And you and can you can get the powder form to oh. put like as you can add to like your smoothies or whatever mm -hmm. um, in Accra. So it's really really good. I'll look, it, I'll look for it. Yeah. How does it taste? Yeah, it's not, not bad. bad. It's like bitterish. Mm. Yeah, Tiangu peanuts, uh, sweet potato. Have we still got some stuff Watermelon. here? Watermelon. Yeah, that's some I've sweet potato. Some of the peanuts and this is all butternut squash. Yeah, oh, squash. yeah, we had that too. Watermelon, but the animals kept eating everything. Oh no. So. It doesn't look like a garden now, but <laughs> I swear it was. It was. <laughs> Do you have so, other animals or is it just the chickens? Just the chickens. Oh, right, okay. Oh, this is deep. Whoa. So, mine just stepped. <laughs> okay. So, this is, we bought this piece of land a few weeks ago. Oh, right. So, to extend it. Oh, cool. Uh, Me, we always mine. wanted water yeah. on the land, so this has river. Oh, at the end, so we intend to build more guest house over here, but Khan, as we like to call him, lives over there somewhere, which is a big oh, python. Oh wow, yeah, apparently there's a python that lives here. So <laughs> this is my actual dream, like mm. this part that you can see, the, the height, this, this is the vision that I had before I came here. And oh. imagine when we first came, we didn't know about this part, so he just had like a good feeling about that land. He's like, just trust me, trust me. I was like, I don't want that land though. There's no water There's no running. water running. It's like, it's just a piece of bush. I don't want it. And just a few months ago, we got this. Wow. And I was like, ah, yay. So does the land go down? Yeah. To there, all, yeah. all the way. Yeah, so all of this that you can oh, see in front is down. ours as well. Yeah. And this is my favorite spot. Oh, wow. And it's like even <laughs> yeah. like hills in the distance. Yeah, I know. Oh, this is so nice. So what's the plan here? Are you going to build, I think you're saying you're going to build a house here? Yeah, we're going to build a house here as well. So wow. like, I think I'm not, I mean, I don't want to say for certain, but there's probably going to be at least five properties on the whole land. Okay. Yeah, so for long and short term guests, while they transition to their own independence, mm. they want to have this experience and they want to purchase land because there's so much land available oh, oh yeah loads and loads of land how <laughs> much is land around here like approximately oh you're talking like anything from five four thousand to five thousand seeds a plot oh wow so yeah. that's like about 400 pounds each mm. yeah. Right? yeah yeah a plot. Equivalent. Mm. that's really good <laughs> yeah it's I know. extremely good <laughs> yeah. you know we've shown um, a family around the other day and some of the prizes they have had in a crop or even in a brie it's just ridiculous. A breeze like really extortion in that. I've been quoted like fifty thousand dollars. Yeah, yeah just like, crazy. Well, a breeze yeah. like I don't know, like the new Brixton, like you know when Brixton <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's being like gentrified. Yeah, it's been yeah. really gentrified. It's like it's the price has just gone up. When we were there, it wasn't that bad, but mm. it was still extortion. How is your day to day? Like, what do you do in a normal day? First, as uh, soon as we wake up, to lift us up quickly we'll eat a banana or an apple or an orange or any kind of small food that we can just eat when we wake up mm -hmm. and then when everybody else wakes up Tian cuts up some food like pineapple and papaya and mango and then we will eat that we eat a delicious, yummy and healthy fruit salad. Oh, nice. And if there's leftover food, then we'll eat that. We'll warm up the leftover food and Good eat it for food. lunch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he loves food. We have gratitude circle. Which is what? What do we do in gratitude, gratitude circle? We say what we're grateful for and we go around as a circle and we each say one thing that we're grateful for and we'll do three rounds of that and then after we'll pray and then after we'll do a meditation and we didn't used to do this but and then now we added something new so after that we do 
positive affirmations because most of the times dinner takes really long. So we get dinner ready <laughs> when probably at this time and and we make dinner and then dinner finishes probably at night time and then we eat dinner and then we have gratitude circle then we pray and then we have a meditation and most of the times when we have a meditation and at night time we fall asleep through it because you're just still and you're closing your and you're closing your eyes and taking deep breaths. Thanks, Akel. Despite what you hear, um, even from people in Accra, what they pay to build their house, I see, is crazy. But when you live out here um, and you can, you know, you don't have to pay for sanding, you don't have to pay for so many different things as much, um, or you get it for free. It, you can do, you know. This house has probably cost us ten thousand pounds um, all in. Wow! Do you know what I mean? Like, but also, amazing. the more money you have, the more you end up spending, spending. as oh. well. You're not as resourceful because you don't need to be. So, mm -hmm. if you've got the money there, you just oh, yeah, I'll just buy that. Yeah. So, yeah, um, wow, you, so you've had to scrimp and scrape and you know hustle and budget, budget and <laughs> bring people down yeah. with their prices. And, yeah, you know. You just learn, especially now that we have the respect in our community, we now are getting the real prices. Mm. You're not getting the, as they like to call it, the abroni price. Do you know what I mean? We're getting the real prices. Um, and yeah, we've seen that, okay, our money can go a long way here. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? So we're doing as much as we can. Obviously, to complete it, like I said, we do have the GoFundMe, which is just to help us complete all the facilities and mm. solar and the uh, borehole just so that when people come here they don't have to rely on out there mm -hmm. everything is here mm -hmm. and, you know even if there is a storm we'll have electric and yeah. the water Ghana won't cut off the water do you know <laughs> what I mean oh, so yeah oh, nice. well thanks so much for showing me around oh, so it's <laughs> so beautiful here I absolutely love it so nice to meet you guys in real life and your kids Likewise. as well <laughs> and um, for anybody that's interested, you've also got a YouTube channel that they yes. can check out and subscribe. And what's the name of the channel for everyone? Uh, Life with the Kings, that's L-Y-F-E, with the Kings. Or if you put in Off Grid in Ghana, we've capitalised that. So <laughs> you'll see us come up here. And definitely subscribe to them. I'll put the link in the description below. And please do subscribe to my channel. And thanks so much for watching. See you. Bye.